Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the League of Inches podcast, Super Coach Edition, and it is probably the biggest one we have ever done. The team list Tuesday, round one. I know we had Vegas, but this is the big one. This is everyone uh, involved now. We all know everyone's round one teams, apart from the West Tigers, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if there's many people we're looking at for a Super Coach point of view from the Tigers, though. Um and I'll tell you what, I've had a, a busy couple of days just catching up now. I've literally got off a plane and straight into this podcast. So that is how dedicated I am to you guys. Thank you once again for all listening, making it worth my time to come on here and make sure we get you guys some content out there. Um, straight away, I want to, we've obviously, me and Jesse have put the post out last week with our team for the players that were playing on the weekend. Um, I think. I think I stuck the same. I think Jesse may have changed one or two players last minute. So his team has already changed from what um, we put in. Then obviously after today's list that we quickly jumped on and have made an initial changes so far, knowing Jesse and myself, we would definitely make some more changes before Thursday comes and probably into the, the round as well. Uh, and of course, we've also got Shane uh, who I'll bring on here and, you would have heard Shane from our draft episode, which got plenty of great feedback from. We are doing, and a few people have actually reached out and asked us about this. We are doing a draft special again with the League of Inches draft. I'm just going to talk through that, but we're just going to try and work out some time. It's a crazy week with team lists um, happening. But Shane, welcome aboard again for the Super Coach side of things. I feel like you're... You're the most experienced apprentice, I think, ever in podcasting <laughs> history. Um, Supercoach for years. You can quickly explain yeah. how long you've been doing Supercoach for. Uh, and basically, you should be running the show instead of me. All right, mate. Well, we're talking off air, but you're you're the hardest working podcaster in Supercoach. So I'm happy for you to keep running it. But um, yeah, been playing Supercoach uh, Classic and Draft for over 10 years to our varying degrees of success um and uh consume about every podcast under the sun so you take in a little bit of info some might say too much but um yeah love love my classic so after i was on for the draft i was i was pretty keen to get involved in some of the classic stuff um haven't finished as high as 14th like jesse um but uh i've had my brushes with the top thousand on a few few times and it hasn't meant to hasn't uh been uh meant to be so but uh, hopefully this year we'll change it up. Yeah, we are going for Jesse's title. I know that much. He's got two people mm. now hunting him down from the League of Inches crew. One thing we do need to pick with you: uh, you you've come on board for the Supercoach side of things, not just draft, but you will be on our classic episodes as well. But mate, you've already booked a holiday in. This is unheard of. Um, the apprentice just jumping on board, but going, you know what, boys, I'm away for three weeks. So I think we we lose I'll, you next week, don't we? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm flying flying out to Vietnam on Wednesday for uh, three weeks, so I'm sure I can um, I'm sure I can find some some good Wi-Fi in like yeah. Hanoi and, and just <laughs> just say, oh, here you go, here's uh, here's twenty bucks, go get a massage to the the girlfriend. So <laughs> surely oh, the time zones won't be too to... far off. In... Nah, it's about three to four hours. So oh, you're yeah. fine. That's easy. It's just really? like New South Wales to Queensland. That's yeah. it. Oh. Except way more civilised in Vietnam. <laughs> That's throwing me off at the moment. Jesse, look, uh, Shane mentioned it. We haven't had a top 14 finish like yourself. And Teamless Tuesday has arrived. And I know you've basically grown a few inches this afternoon since 4 o'clock. Do you want to talk us through your last four hours or so? Um, well, it probably took me about four hours to actually load the team list up after today's um, <laughs> carnage, trying to load in both the NRL's website and the Supercoach site. So it was, um, I actually didn't get a great deal of time to look at the team list until I got home. And then there was, um, oh, I wouldn't say wholesale changes to the team. It was pretty set beforehand, but there has been a couple of movers in and out, nothing too drastic. So it's, um, there are some some players in that I wasn't expecting to be honest, but I don't think anyone really was. So we can get into all that when we come around to it. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's a big day today. It's teamless Tuesday it's round one, I suppose. Yeah, it's huge. And you know, I normally leave you till last, but you know what? I'm going to throw to you first just to reveal your team, what it is for now. Uh, we all know 
we're not dumb. We know it will change significantly <laughs> probably by Thursday, but nah, let us know it. now. Don't go into too much detail with it because we'll go more detail with the team list side of things and actually talk about the players then. Let's yep. quickly talk us through your squad. Um, all right. So I started with Brandon Smith. Um, I think I was pretty vocal about that anyway. I ended up going back to him and I've taken out the Eels boys and I've thrown um, Levi in just for that cheapy option because – I don't think I really, really want to be getting involved too hard in those boys, considering they're not the dirtest cheap price ever. But um, front rowers, I had to toll a play. Said everyone was going to be doing that. Um, at the moment, my other front row forward is Leo Thompson. So I've gone pretty potty with those two. Um, Hughes and Henry on the bench. I did have McKaylee on the bench, but obviously nothing worked out there for us. Um, my second row forwards, I'm looking at Lukey, Furmore, Lane. Um, I had Piakura and Tupanua start and do absolutely fuck all for me during the game. So <laughs> they're on they're on the watch list, but I think they'll be fine for it. And I've got Morgan Smithies as well, plugged away there. Uh, halfbacks, Nathan Cleary, Nico Hines. It was always going to be the way. Uh, my 5'8 is Dylan Brown, and my backup 5'8 is Ethan Strange. So I ended up paying up for Brownie. I think after the whole Munster thing, slipping in the shower, it just deterred me a little bit with the bye and potentially a round one out. Um, my center wings, I've got uh, RTS, Taylor May, Drew Hutchison, and I played Ben Turbo. So Burbo got me the big points, which is fun. My bench is Jamin Salmon, Bostock, and Torpiki. So just trying to capitalize on some few weeks there with the um, Nickel Cook star out. And then my fullbacks, Kalen Ponga, Ryan Pappenhausen. So I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest with you. I don't think I'm going to change too much from, from here on out. That looks like I'm going to be set for me. What coin do you have left? Uh, 32 and a half. Oh, for once in this, I think for once this whole year so I far, know. you've got more salary cap remaining than I do. So that is huge. I think that's okay, the first. So I will touch right, on good. one. I was actually talking to Shane about it a minute ago. Um, there is a trade I can do right now that leaves me with zero, and I'm very tempted. Um, it'll involve trading out Nathan Cleary which I'm not a fan of, but going down to Moses. And then I can go from two of us a check up to Greg Marzu, and I have $0 left over. It's a perfect fudging, You're fudging the numbers. Like, it can't possibly be that you've worked it out to get the zero, surely. It's, it's, like, it's right? a dead zero. It's straight on zero bucks. I mean, it's, I, it's I've seen it. I've seen it, so I do believe you, but I still, it's, it seems like black magic. Yeah. The spreadsheets are fine. Yeah. What did I say? It was, <laughs> it was uh, Sydney Roosters level of uh, salary cap management. Cap management. Yeah. yeah, I've got the whiteboards out. I'm that crazy guy staring at the boards with the strings drawn everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That is insane. No, I, I like that team. Um, I have a number of players on my side myself. But shall I let – actually, I'm going to save Shane to last. Save um, – I was going to say the best to last, but no, – No, say it. Uh, say it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. So I've got my hookers. I've actually paid up, and I've actually gone all the way to Harry Grant. Um, I've ended up doing it, thought about it, and gone. I think instead of just fart ass around, because I don't want to play a second hooker. My second hooker is Danny Levi. And to be honest, I'm tempted to even just go to an absolute enough for hooker at the moment. I just do not give a shit about my second hooker at all. Um, Taylor May, Sean Kepi. So both obviously played last weekend. So they're locked in for my front row. Uh, a little bit disappointed with Kepi, but I guess he did get over his um, BE. So can't complain too much. Um, I've actually gone the two Bulldog cheapies in my reserve uh, players just because it sort of works. And again, I'm not planning on playing either of these players. So I'm just hoping they sort of, it worked to get Harry Grant into my team. So I was happy with it. Uh, so that's Farmer Silly and, and Hughes. Second rowers. So the two that have already played is Wong um, and Pia Cura. Both suffered some some kind of injuries. So obviously we know Pia Cura's. And then Wong just, I don't know what happened to him on the weekend. It was a bit annoying, but. Still 46 for what happened with him. Take that. Sean Lane's my other starting one. Furmore and Morgan Smith is on the bench with Joe Chan in the reserves as well. That He just came from nowhere, and we'll, we'll talk about him a bit later again. Almost pretty much bottom dollar. I was all over that. Um, Nico Hines, Nathan Cleary are the halves. Dylan Brown, 5A. They've gone Ethan Strange as well. I think since he's been named, you just you have to go in. It's, it's simple as that. I wanted to get him into my wing and centers, but I just could not make it work. Um, two of us are Sheck, Laybutt, Taylor May, and Ben Trebojevic in my wing and centers. Bostock, two of Picky, and I got went Gay Guy as well. 
uh, for South Sydney. So he picked up a nice 55 and I'm hoping he actually plays a bit more. So I know Jesse has been livid about that choice since I've made it and he realised when he was versed to me and I had Gagos. So he yep. wasn't too too pleased with that one. Um, Ponga and Pappenhausen as well for me um, for the fullbacks. So hey, I'll go into more detail as we, we discuss the team list. But Shane, let us know what you've got. How, how can I follow those two teams, please? Oh, how much money did you have left? Oh, sorry, I've got three thousand left, so I don't Ooh, have okay. anything. Kind of fine for Harry Grant. It's still it's a very good side considering you have seven fifty k. I don't even know where you got that extra coin from. Thinking about it, mm. yeah, me either. But here we are. <laughs> it's, nice. it's almost like you're missing a player. You got twenty four out of twenty five selected. <laughs> you you can actually like, no, no, say with com- with conf- you can say with confidence that you don't know where you got the money because I don't know about you boys, but how many times have you made changes and you're like. I can't remember where I started. Like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. That was me at at the airport rushing before the plane took off, making some changes. I was like, shit, I've got enough. I've I left hook at last, and I was like, shit, I've actually got seven (laughs) hundred eighty k. I can make Harry Grant work. Sweet. (laughs) So I was like, chasing an old screenshot up, trying to find out where you started from. (laughs) Yeah, I've got no idea. Um. All right then. Cool. Cool. So my side. So I've got uh, Brandon Smith at hooker. So. Glorious 48 points. Uh, come on, cheese. Bit more next week, please. Um, Levi at uh, bench hooker. So I don't think anybody had Levi on their um, on their team <laughs> for the <their> team <laughs> list. That came out the nowhere. most traded player today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and that just honestly like led to so many changes in my side because I went from hands down to Levi, and I think it was yeah around 100k difference. So. Once you get a bit of money, you want to start spending it. But um, went down to Arrow and uh, Bad Boy Spencer in the uh, FRF. So they both played. And, uh, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in Arrow and I'm very disappointed in Spencer for multiple reasons. Um, (laughs) And uh, I have got, so preemptively thinking that I'm going to trade out uh, Spencer next week, I've moved uh, Cotter into my side. He's on my bench. So I've spent up for him. And I've got uh, Sammy Hughes at the doggies like everybody else in Supercoach does. Um, two RFs, I've got Lukey, Firma, and Wong has played for me. And then on the bench, I've got Smithies, uh, Joe Chan, who literally came from nowhere, and uh, Viliami Fafita because he is dirt cheap. Um, halfbacks, I've got Hines, uh, Captain Hines, and Mitch Moses on the bench. So no Cleary. I'll be shitting my pants watching him play. Um, five eights. I've I've gone a bit rogue, boys. I've tried something different. Dylan Brown uh, at five oh eight. God, yeah, that's a shock. Wow, <laughs> what a blow! I'm taking I'm taking Super Coach five eights to strange new places. Um, bad boy. Speaking speaking of strange new places, I didn't actually play on that segue. Ethan Strange is on the bench uh, oh, for five sweet. eight, and smooth. <laughs> Uh, and wingers, uh, center wingers, oh, C- I don't know, they wrote wings slash centers, but everyone always calls them CT dubs, so that confuses me when you look at it. But uh, anyway, uh, we got Val Holmes, uh, RTS, Taylor May, and uh, Jamin Salmon is uh, in my starting side. Uh, I've made the classic rookie mistake. I played Ben Trevojevic in my side, but he's in, he's on my bench, so you know, it's always kind of you want to. Yeah, you want to, you want to play like if you want to play the guys earliest in your starting side, so you got them locked in and you can move shit around. But uh, yeah, he's there, and I was happy when he scored. Um, I've got uh, Tua Picky as well. He's just too cheap. So yeah. and I think you know, yeah, he, he might get a f- few prize rises if he doesn't. Whatever. Uh, Bostock. Um, I think most people have got him. I've got Tedesco at fullback. Uh, Seventy points. I was. Not unhappy with it, but uh, a lot of the other fullbacks were looking very dangerous. So um, tough watching. Um, and then I've got Pappenhausen on the bench. So that is the side. And then I've got 212 grand in the bank. Oh, making interest with that, huh? I was yeah. going to say, is um, that I, tactical or? I'm investing it in Bitcoin. <laughs> Booming. Might be able to do uh, something with Spencer as well. Go straight to yeah. Harris. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I was talking with Jesse off air and um, Spencer is on his way out. Um, 
and I will be going straight to Taylor, Taylor May. Um, Terrell. No, Terrell May. Yeah, too many teammates kicking around. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's about a hundred k. So um, yeah, um, I'll go straight to him, and then we'll see. We'll see what I can do with the other hundred k. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. It's like you kind of you end up with a lot of cash, and I change things around and. I could end up like basically on zero, like Jesse was talking, but yeah, I was like, oh, I'm happy with it, and I've got money set aside for next week for a trade specifically, so it's not just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, That's, fair enough. He's got the X, the Excel spreadsheets out. You Playing did mention ahead. it, and we probably should quickly mention it now and get into it because I reckon there might be a weekly occurrence because there'll be different options. A captain and, and vice captain who we've all got for now as as our choices. Um, I'll go first. I'm going all out and going Caleb Pongo with the C. Uh, mm. I'm just going all in on him. Uh, and then I'll guess the VC doesn't really matter since I'm doing that, but I've got it on Nico Hines um, at the moment. So that's where I'm going. I'm just going all in on the KP factor. I've, as Jesse knows, I've never looped. I'm going to start off not looping, hopefully. Uh, but no that could change this year. Uh, you know what? Jesse can go last this time. Shane, you've already said you got Hines that your captain. Yeah, Heinz captain, and uh, Teddy was the uh, VC, so I will not be looping first round. <laughs> 70 points, I think so. No. It, was, it was tempting. Yeah, uh, I have Captain Ponga as well. Pretty clear. First player in my team, straight with the C. So, um, yeah, don't think there's really too much to go into with that. I reckon he's going to just do bits against the Raiders, but fingers crossed. So he can hope is, there a tactic, is there a tactic to put him as a VC? For anyone out there playing Supercoach maybe for the first time and don't really understand how things work, is there a tactic out there where you could go the VC on him and just to double check? Yeah, you could because they play first. Um, so you can get and the how's idea it work? there. Maybe explain how it works a bit. Um, well, you put the VC on Ponga. He goes ballistic, scores 180 points. And you think, you know what, I'm going to take that. I'll take that to the bank. Um, then what you'll need to do is put your captaincy on a player who isn't playing. So you'll need to make sure that you've got a red dot somewhere. Start him. Shit, I don't. And, um, yeah, when he doesn't play, you will get Ponga's VC points as captain and you'll also get the lowest scoring or auto emergency that's on your bench too to cover the player that you've taken out. So you'll have to um, – the whole point of it is to make sure that – what you're going to get from your captain. Like if you've got Cleary as your other option captain, you have to really bank on the fact that Pong is really going to outscore what Cleary's going to get or Hines or whoever your big boys are. Um, and your AE isn't on like one point. Like if you've got Piakura, for example, and you didn't start him or play him, but he's sitting there with the four points, you're going to get those four points. So sometimes it doesn't really work out too well, but there's so many different pages that have um, loop calculators on there that if you're worried, you can put the numbers in and see, you know, is this actually going to benefit me or is it not? But you are taking a, a punt at the end of the day to lock in that, um, to lock in that VC loop because, you know, you could get outdone or your captain, your actual captain could score very similar points, but your actual player that you've taken out will score more than AE has and it ends up being backwards. So it's a risky play in the first place, but you've got to be certain. It's why you want those massive, massive games. That's pretty much looping 101. Locked in. Shane, you got anything to add there, or is he basically just a, I, I a was gonna, plus? I was I was gonna say that is that is a fairly good uh fairly good analysis. It's kinda it's commonly used during buy rounds. Um you know, these days like there's less players that count to your score in buy rounds, so uh yeah. it's less uh important. But uh I could probably count on one hand the amount of times I've looped in a non buy round in like 10 years of super coach. So it's pretty rare. Yeah. It's hard to do. I'm guessing it's pretty hard to do round one because most people want to have all players actively playing. You don't want to have someone in the red dot to start with. Well, well, sometimes people start cool. with nuffs. But yeah. Yeah. You can get enough just so you know, there's your loop guy. You know what I mean? And you pick someone so, so left field, 0% ownership, you know, they're definitely not going to get a start all year. Um, and they're your guy, but you are taking someone out too, especially round one where you've just, you know, this is the team that you've set and you, you're, you're happy and you've committed with to then just take a guy out. It seems like a bit of a waste. 
just stick with it. It's the sort of one week you're That's allowed to get it wrong. I will. I'll be going all in on the KP factor. I'll be watching hopefully with a huge smile on my face Thursday night. Talking about that, let's get into TLT, Teamless Tuesday, the Please. first for League of Inches podcast. And it's the Newcastle Knights first up versus the Canberra Raiders. The Raiders is a whole nother story that we will get into and uncover because Ricky's been Ricky and there's some good things, there's some bad things, and there's just some what the actual you know what in there as well. Um, for the Newcastle Knights, pretty stock stand, I think, in the end to what we all expected. And Ari Tawali got that wing spot. Um, the halves, Gamble, Hastings, I don't think either of those are, are super coach um, relevant. Phoenix Crosland gets that hooker spot. Jaden Bradley, we're not too sure what's happening with him yet. It's pretty, yeah, uh, it's, there's hamstring issues. There's obviously that's from the knee and stuff. There's just so much unknown there. So he could have it for two weeks. He could have it for, for 12 weeks. You, ne- you never know there. So keep an eye on that one. Um the only other one, really, Leo, uh, sorry, Dylan Lucas gets the starting spot with Kaipi's poor named at 17. So he's got to sort of be careful there. But even if he's getting 50 minutes or so, I've got no doubt Dylan Lucas can do a job. And he was someone that I was really looking for in my team. I just couldn't find a way to sort of get him in. I just, there was too much sort of sideways stuff for my liking to, to try and make him. But it's one player that the Kaipi's poor, a piece, Paul effect. Scares me as well with him. I, I just, yeah, I, I, there's so much temptation there, but in the end, I'm, I can't do it. Where, yeah. where are we at with the the Knights lineup, boys? Um, the back line's pretty much, you know, as simple as it was going to be. I don't think there's any surprises there. Um, Jacob Saifidi in over um in over Daniel. That's um yeah. you know much of a muchness. Crossland will keep that spot for a while, I reckon. I think Brayley's going to be, you know, in and out for a fair bit. I don't think he even gets the starting spot back when he comes back, to be fair. Uh, but, yeah, Dylan Lucas. Look, if that 80-minute spot was pretty guaranteed for him and Pierce Paul wasn't just lurking around on the bench there, I think it would have been red hot. But, um, you know, you're going to expect that minute split, maybe 50-30 or so, Pierce Paul come through. Um, both going to be a headache for everyone, I think, because they're both pretty solid options on their own. But... Obviously, they're going to eat into each other's minutes. So I think you just got to wait and see what happens between them. But everything else is pretty standard stuff. Both of them got a lot of potential, man. I think with um, I think with Kai Pierce Paul, I'm kind of okay with the fact that he's not starting. So he might be like a slow burn. He might not make any money. And then you know, you, there's a lot of other mid range options at two RF. So you know, they might get to that juicy cow point where you want to offload, and Kai Pierce could push himself into the. Uh, starting spot at that point because there was a lot of talk that you know that's where he could end up um Mm. so lucas is obviously great so as well um so there's going to be a bit of a battle on his hands but um yeah i can see them switching at some point it's just a matter of when and if his scores go up much starting so i think it's a good option for the future to keep an eye on um but uh yeah i mean there's not much else to be said with the uh with the night side for mine, um, yeah, I think it's all looking pretty good, and there was no crazy surprises. No, no, there are no real shocks, no real emissions either. So, uh, pretty, good, pretty good much, can, yeah, pretty much can move on. The only, the, the one thing I will say for the Kai Pierce Paul thing and Dylan Lucas, I from a rugby league point of view, the Newcastle Knights signed both those English guys pretty early last year, and that was before I think Dylan Lucas really showed what he can do. And I think in a way, the Newcastle Knights are probably thinking, oh, what have we done? Maybe a side we didn't need to make. Like we, we could have Dylan, <laughs> Dylan Lucas playing that 80 minutes week in, week out and don't have this headache at the moment. We're trying to fit two really quality players into our lineup. So crazy what can happen within 12 month period. But I've got no doubt in the world Dylan Lucas will be a star of the future and someone to really keep a close eye on because it seems like he's just he's glued to the trial line as well. He just finds his way to the line a lot so yeah. we've seen it in the trials he, he was pretty devastating Canberra Raiders the Ricky Stewart effect is real once again for, for super coaches um one or two nice nice it is for us the rest suck dogs balls um <laughs> I don't know really where to go uh with the Raiders because on the on the um the good thing I guess 
the fact that Ethan Strange has that number six jersey. So that was great. I think he has much more upside for a super coach point of view than Kyle Weeks does, I think. Yeah. He just outshone him. Like it, for me, it was weird because he did play this number seven jersey both trials. So I thought that was a bit weird, but he obviously just shone, especially that second one against the Cowboys. And I think that's really put him um, put him ahead in that race. Unfortunately, Jordan Rapan is named at fullback, so we don't get to see uh, the young gun, Chevy Stewart, uh, which is a shame, but we had did hear reports. He's probably going to save him for a bit later in the year when um, he gets a bit more experience in the New South Wales Cup against the men. Xavier Savage is on the wing. Um, Zach Hosking does get that starting spot, and I I can't see it here. I don't know what happened to – what's his name? They're, uh, Whitehead. Elliot Whitehead. Uh, yeah. Four hamstring, I think, four weeks potentially. Oh, so it is injury. Okay. Yeah, it's injury related. Yeah. The big one, Morgan Smith is starting at lock, 345K, get into my team. Just yep. a workhorse. He's not going to do anything spectacular, so you're not going to probably see much in the game, but he'll just get through his tackles. He'll get through his hard work, and hopefully by the end of the game he's on a, a 50, 55 or so, and we're just going, thank you very much, and watching that interest tick up. Shane, the the Raiders, what what point uh, sticks out to you? I was I was just having a flashback to uh, when Teamless first opened, and um, I think every single side had like – three to four Raiders cheapies on their bench and just nah it looked horrible at the time and you just knew it wasn't going to happen so um Chevy Stewart's obviously not come through so um Rapana's got the nod at fullback while Chris is out so I I don't know how much trust you can have in this back line so um you'd think that Chris comes back in at fullback because he played most of the year there last year um assuming Rapana makes his way back to the wing. So uh, Kotrick, does he stay there for that long? Um, don't know. He hasn't really Savage. impressed in the past. Savage, yeah. It's it's all a bit all over the place. Um, yeah. yeah, Zach Hosking, he's too expensive. Um, he's like 500-odd K. He might be like a sneaky pickup for a draft player, but not for classic. Um, my question, though, is where do you boys think that uh, Corey Horsberg uh, is going to come back through the side when he's back. So what kind of rotation are we looking at? He'll um, be starting lock, I think. You reckon? Straight back to lock? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to uh, deny that, hey. hey yeah, think Josh, Josh probably Papali will, just because of the, the veteran stage, he'll have that jersey until he, he basically is just putting in absolute putrid performances week to week for about a four-week period. So... And the way Horsburgh sort of come onto the scene last year and really started to to make himself the player he is now with the Origin, uh, etc. As well, he'll have to start for mine, which is the worry for for Morgan Smith is because I think it's what three weeks for Horsburgh or something until he's back. So, um, yeah, that was the thing that I was a bit interested about Smith is because the thing I love about him is playing big minutes and just getting through his through his work. The fact mm-hmm. that Horsburgh is coming back. Yeah, I don't know. Depends yeah. what kind of player he is, because a lot of people are saying he's just like a real workhorse and not a ton of attacking upside. So he's kind of going to need to get the minutes if he's if he's like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like looking at this other side, like I don't know where else um, Big Red's going to go. So mm. the other one I think is Elliot Whitehead when he comes back. What happens yep. there? Because Hudson Young and Zach Hosking as well um, are big minute players. Maybe Whitehead could move into that sort of forward uh, road, uh, middle rotation as well. You never know because if Zach Hosking hits the ground running like we have seen him at Penrith and plays so well, you almost have to have him still in that 12 jersey. Like you can't be changing that He's playing if he's playing that well to open the, the season. Yeah, I think it was a great signing for them to make as well. And I feel like they needed it too because everyone else is just aging around them. Um, Obviously, their ideal secondary pairing would be Young and Hosking for the long term. So, um, But you just know he just loves Whitehead, man. So you've got to think he's going to make his way in. Whether it's off the bench and he rotates with the middles, it doesn't mean you know good signs for Smithies in general too. So that's just another thing to look at. But, man, you could honestly see a different lineup every week with that team. And I just don't feel like there's too much you want to get involved with. So um, as far as relevancy for Supercoach goes, Strange is fantastic because he's so cheap. Um, 
Levi is great because he's so cheap, but again, not a great deal of upside. Um, and Smithy's great because he's so cheap. So there's a going trend here. I don't think you really want to get involved in spending pay, like paying up big money for anyone because you just don't know what's going to happen. I can seriously see Levi's situation being he's on for like 20 minutes and then Starling comes on and just takes the rest and we don't see Levi again. But because he's cheap, welcome to inch at a time. Uh, we, we are delighted to have you. Uh, but I see that as an absolute hit because Ricky's always loved Tom Starling. I just think he's going to protect him at the start of the game so he's not involved with that initial bash from barge and then he comes on and just does what he does around the ruck. I feel like he hates Starling. Otherwise, he would have started <laughs> Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's yeah, a love hate to do that. Yeah, he just hates him because there's always been like Wolford in there, even though he's had remember, Starling ready yeah. to go. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a chance that Levi could be this year's Sonny Luke, but I don't know. I don't plan on looping, and I hope I don't get called out to worry about it. <laughs> so that's that. Fingers crossed. Uh, I think that's about it for the Raiders, to be honest. I think, as you said, yeah. Jesse, just – tread with caution huh there, there could be a lot that changes within the, the next couple of weeks so some looks appealing right now might not be appealing in the long run and might not be appealing enough to get you some quality cash to make those sorts of trades and that worthwhile um the first of the friday games the warriors versus the cronulla sharks uh obviously charles nickel clock that is out so as we spoke about earlier he's in i think all three of our sides at the moment till picky is the fullback um which is exciting it actually sounds like to me, Charles will be out a little bit longer than we first thought. Uh, I think it was first thought like maybe a week or two. I'm starting here now. It's more likely to be like four or five or something, which is great news for us. My worry, though, is the guy that's in centre, Roger Tuovasa Shek, who has hit the ground of running like he's never left the game. I could see that easily becoming he just goes into fullback within a week or two and he just looks on fire. He's proven that NRL basis, he's, he's got it. No offense to Tua Picky, but he's not Roger Tua Vasa Shek. So if Tua Vasa Shek was all the coach was going, it's time to put you back there. It's time to go back to that one jersey. I, I could see it happening in a few weeks. So I do like Tua Picky right now, but I can quickly see that becoming a bit of a, a bit of a slap in the face. Oh, I'd love to see it happen. I'm not going to say Why no to the last shake going back to fullback, <laughs> so that's never a bad thing because I got both of them yeah. anyway. So you you were going to um, trade him out for Marzu a second ago, mate. Come on. Well, he's the only way I can do it. That's the thing. It's not, it's not ideal. It's the reason I haven't pressed submit, but it's the only way I can actually afford to get him. So live live trade. Yeah, that's it. No, no, not for me. Uh, the rest of it. Luke Metcalf got the five eighth position, uh, which I think we all sort of expected from last year's form. He he deserves first shot. Apart from that, they were pretty much stock standard with what we thought would happen. Um, I, in a way, I think Mitch Barnett's stocks have risen a little bit more. Um, he is a little bit pricey um, for what he can do, but I think if you're looking for a pod um, on that sort of upside, I, I'd be looking at Mitch Barnett. Yeah, it's definitely pod. I hope he does well because I drafted him. So <laughs> I'll have eyes I'm gonna, on him. That's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a big no on Mitch Barnett. Uh He's, he's like decent, but uh, I reckon uh, the body's not really giving as much yeah. as it was back in the day. I, I think uh, an NRL physio pod uh, basically laid out a good reason to not have him. I can't remember the specifics, but uh, yeah, I was not keen on him before and I definitely wasn't after. He's a broken man. He just churns him out. But they all do. Look at Tohu <laughs> as well. That guy's just bandaged up. And he still goes out there and stop. does a shift. So, yeah, they're a bunch of Warriors, you, man. It's in the name. You boys got anything else on the Warriors? I feel like they're pretty stock standard, actually. Um, well, Nia yeah, Corey's... Yeah, he got his yeah, injured. injured. So I think he's his foot got a fracture yeah. or something. But I hope. I think they said that his boot's coming off soon this week. and So that might spell, you know, back to the bench for Ford because Cape Ball, you reckon, starts. Everything else is, yeah, as expected. Let's so. let's be real. I don't think that's affecting anybody's Supercoach sides. Nobody that's listening to a Supercoach podcast has Ford, Capewell, or Nia Corey no. in the mix. Yeah. So no. not that's so much. Um, I don't. I don't know if there is. Yeah, like some people might have AFB in their sides if they want to spend up, but not for me. There's just yeah, there's not much happening in the forwards for me. No, relevance. it's big minutes for yeah, AFB, though. Yeah. From what it looks like, they're all going to get massive minutes through the forwards. So 
He might he might be like somebody especially, that you, you work towards, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty so, much. Especially while Nia Kura's out, because I actually think Nia Kura in the offseason was training as a middle. That's why Capewell was such a key signing for him. So mm. I think Ford's actually locked in there for, for big minutes on the edge. Uh, and we'll see what happens with Nia Kura when he comes back. He's obviously got that flexibility. I actually think when he comes back, he'll be on that on the uh, on the bench. For the Sharkies, unfortunately, not seeing any of the nice cheapy options in the back line. Cade Dykes and Kyle Iro, I'm talking about. Fitzy has done what Fitzy has done since he's got to the Sharks and gone Mr. Reliables and, and the safe option. I have been a very critical, uh, as everyone knows, listening to these podcasts for about six to 12 months now with this. Um, and I just don't think it works for the Sharks. They're playing a boring brand of football. Uh, and I just think too many classy sides, the top eight sides know exactly what they're going to get. Um, and they just keep playing into their hands. I would have loved to see Eero. He's, he's 18th man, but he's not going to be making this side at the moment. Um, for a super coach point of view, it's pretty much stocks in like Trindle Hines, um, are your halves. I guess that's a talking point early on boys. We have spoken about in the off season Trindle's, um, influence on Hines. I want to get Shane's thoughts on this because we've obviously had ours, Jesse. Let's see uh, a neutral's point of view or a fresh He's point a of view boy. from Shane. He's a diehard oh, shark. I just man. blasted I wanna, him. I want to get I just it blasted him. Yeah. Let's get a neutral's perspective on the Cronulla Sharks. Yeah, go on. Um, <laughs> mate, you're talking. You're talking about one of the greatest attacks in NRL footy. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like you, you were saying that they like Fitzy's gone to the the same old well. Um, one thing you can't say about Fitzy is that he doesn't back the boys. Sometimes he backs them for way too long, but he he backs the boys. So um, Moylan's gone. That's that's one change. Blessing. But, um, yeah, like I, I personally didn't see Iro getting a start. I know people have been calling for Talakai to go to, you know, the bench or edge or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's, he's been doing a job. He's been doing a job. He gets great return meters, um, you know, and the other, the other guys in the back line, they've got that attacking flair. So he's got a little bit of it, but yeah, I think the best thing he's doing is, is the returns and the hard yards. So um, I mean, yeah, the coach has obviously shown Wilton a bit of um, a bit of like second chance there. I reckon he basically left the side last year when he got injured, and people were calling for his head. So he kind of got a reprieve there, and he's been given this another reprieve here by yeah being named at twelve. And honestly, if if he doesn't perform, they've still got those defensive issues. Then yeah, maybe we do need to. Take Talakai out, chuck him in the twelve, and then get Iro in at um, in at centre. So, because yeah, like he can't like Fitzy, he can't keep doing the same thing and having the same defensive lapses um, again for as long as he did. Like it happened last year. Um, things got better when Wade Graham went in, but Wade Graham's gone; he's retired. Um, rest in peace, Wade Graham. Um, and. Uh, it's like, you know, like he can't he can't wait that long. He can't wait that long. So um yeah, hopefully the boys start out hot and um recreate some of that 2016 magic. But um if they don't, I expect there to be some early changes. Otherwise I'll be marching down to Northies to uh, have a word with uh Craig Fitzgibbon. Yeah, if you Do me a favor. That. Just have a quick play with your mic cable or something, because it sounds like you've gone underwater for some reason all of a sudden. I don't know if Jesse's hearing that as well, but yeah, a little it's bit all, scratchy. Yeah, right. we're, we're back. Yeah, we're back to being all right now. Um, is there a pod here in Royce Hunt, guys? He is starting. He's at about three hundred and twenty odd k or something, and I, I think Oregon Confuci makes way for Brayton Hamlin Ueli when he comes back. So I think he still gets that spot. I looked at back at his stats because I was. Originally, terms and there's nothing there that excites me at all. There was like an odd yeah. 80 or something, um, and that's about it. So there's nothing too big, but I don't know. There's a, there's a there's a I don't know. I feel like there could be a pod there for the price. I feel like you're <laughs> reaching for Royce. I, I am Royce the choice, mate. Go for it. Four yeah, forward I mean, bench. Four forward bench. Yeah. That's all I'll say. There's not yeah. minutes to get around. No, nah, not really, man. You'd half expect Rudolph to make a way in there too. Fanukin, obviously, with McInnes going back. There's too many. It's just you're not going to get what you want out of him. 
I think he's priced at like three thirty three or thereabouts. Um, if he was lower, you know, you'd tempt the idea just to throw him in there. But I think you pay enough to get him, just to, you know, have a one week stint. And, and by the way, Shane didn't answer my actual question. He just went on a rant about the Sharks and how good they are. Um, what, what how does Trindle question? impact? How does Trindle impact Hines <laughs> or, or vice versa? Oh well, I said they were going to recreate their 2016 magic. So he obviously, um, he obviously makes a great impact. Um, I actually didn't catch the um, the All Stars game where they were halves partners, um, and then in our last trial, um, Heinz had a nickel, so he didn't play. So yeah, I don't know. I I think they'll gel well. Um, I don't think it will have a huge impact on Heinz. Supercoach points. I think Trindle will play back seat um, to Hines. And yeah, hopefully they work well. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I don't think too much changes for Nico, man. I think Trindle just probably gets a bit of a bump because he's going to get something going on. Can't be worse. Cam McInnes, the, the starting lock. Look out. I love We've been asking for that. So. Yeah. I think Dale Finucane goes into the prop rotation as well, especially for this game with no Hamlin Ueli. So it'd be interesting to see. But I feel like the more the thing with McKinnis is the more minutes he plays, it's like the better he gets. <laughs> it just continues to go. It's like he could play for 160 minutes. He's waiting for the game to get extended and to to, yeah. produce, to actually get tired. It, he's a freak. Yeah. Nah. If the games went longer, he'd play longer. It's just a shame that he hasn't got that <laughs> sort of stint, man, because you saw what he did with that. That massive tackle game that he played, I think it was a full 80 yeah. and some, and yeah, he'll he'll keep doing it too. That's why, yeah, seeing him start at lock, it's like, far right, that's tempting because he's just a beast. But um, I think it might be a short-lived position there. Yeah. He still plays good minutes off the bench though, but you do just want him starting. I just don't know, like, think- yeah, it's the same thing again, as I said with Royce, you know, you got the four forward bench, like... I think the only way he plays any more minutes, even though he's starting, is if he rotates with Brayley and Brayley has like a 15-minute, 10 minute spell. Um, because like yeah. you know, you look at it and you're like Brayley probably plays 80. Um, and that is definitely like bucking the trend across the NRL. Like he's one of very few 80 minute hookers. Yep. Yeah. Pretty yeah, well. that is um do you pay for him? Do you, do you go to? Is he a legit option for Super Coach? Like Braley? Braley? I don't think so. I don't think he really has the attacking upside to keep going. He's obviously one of the last 80 minute hookers left, but um, he's the dearest of the, I suppose, the mid tier bracket outside of, you know, Grant, Marshall King, and Cook. Um, I think he's around the 590s. So at that point, even if when we'll get to the Dolphins team, um, I'd sort of just try and find the money for Marshall King, to be fair, if you're going to be mm. spending that much. But yeah, just go up to, just go up to Harry Grant, guys. It's, it's, oh, it's easy enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next off. game up, the yeah, speaking of, what a segue. Melbourne Storm versus the Penrith Panthers. Amy Park, look out. The Melbourne Storm have actually become a, a little bit of a, a super coach friendly team, um, which came out of the blue for us. We all mentioned Joe Chan obviously getting that starting edge spot come from nowhere. He did look pretty good in the trial. Um, so maybe trial form does mean something where everyone's talking about the trials and coaches already had their minds made up. But maybe this is one of those cases where he just put his foot down and, and played a, a great game and got it. Interesting, I see Josh King has moved into the prop uh, position and Liera has gone to that lock uh, side of things which they were doing in the off, uh, the trials as well. So Lock that in that Liera is now a middle, so I don't think that makes him any more super coach relevant, but that is what it is. Interestingly, Sean Bloor is nowhere to be seen. He's 18th man um, on, the, on the bench, so anyone who had him early, quickly get off, I, I think. I, I don't know if he's an option anymore. Um, but apart from that, like you got the, the likes. Obviously, Munster's in some doubt, um, slipping in the shower, uh, so uh, make that. What you, what you, what you, Jesse's laughing. The Cameron dumpsters are, are, are laughing. You had to get Cameron rid of your man. You mustn't be too, you can't be too happy. No, I wasn't happy about it. No, because I was pretty set on starting <laughs> with Monster. I was very, very vocal on it. I was like, cool, it's the team name. He's my boy. He's a pod considering 5'8. Everyone's gone Dylan Brown. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I'll have to try and justify trading Brown out to get him in, I think. But it'll happen at some point. Chain, can you jump on my back here? And can we just get in Jesse a little bit? When you have your team name after a player, I feel like you have to have him in your team. Like you must start with that player. It's just, fo- it's you, you've got to do it. You can't back out now. You can't be called the, no. the Dylan, the, the Brown dumpsters or something. <laughs> you can. Brown, brown dumps. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Look, there's there's a term that's been floated around for a few years, um, in, initiated in Canberra. It's a uh, weak got a dog, and um, <laughs> so I think um, I think He's Jesse's gonna on. have. I think Jesse's gonna have a think about himself. Yeah. So. Well, thinking about it, what I'll do is I'll start with Brown. I'll write it out until round five. I think Sharks play the dogs or something like that. Give or take, it's pretty appealing. I'll just go down a monster. Easy. Sorted. No. Plus, I drafted Fans. Monster. He was my first pick in my draft, the Cameron Dumpsters. So mm. I feel like I'm allowed to at least roll with that one for a little while. No. I'm not letting you get away with this one. You reckon Look, five League, League of Legends change? community, this is where I need you guys to get involved a bit more. I know you all love Jesse for some reason. He can never do no <laughs> wrong. We continue to say it. But get in on him. Reason. If you have your name after a player, you have to have him in your team. I just I don't like it at all. I'm back in Shane's comments up. You are a weak guy to dog for this. It is just oh, Ricky Stewart territory. Um, I think you do have the weak guy to dog in your team as well. So maybe you should look at maybe yeah. a name change. <laughs> See if you can get some play on words with that one. But I'm not happy. I'm not impressed. I, I think you should be going back to Munster. Nah, grow up. I'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we One, think with Joe Chan, boys? Do we think he's a he's an actual legit option? Because this could come back to bite everyone who's who's on him. Um, and Sean Bloor could be named next week. <laughs> I got three letters: N A S. When's he gonna go? When he's back, and what happens there? I think he'll be position? a bench. You reckon? I think he'll be a bench, and he'll float between this. Depending on how the game's going, he'll float between prop or. Um, edge depending on what they're, they're needing at the time or what their weaknesses are in the opposition. Yeah, I don't know. It's, he does it's my so head in this. He could be yeah. easily the best forward in the competition, but he just never reaches it. It does my head in. He's lazy. Yeah. Joe Chan, Joe Chan is up to 17% owned. Um, so I think he started on about 3% when I first added him into my side. Um, so he move. will absolutely, yeah, he is rising faster than Dogecoin. So, um, <laughs> he will, yeah, absolutely be in a whole bunch of sides. Um, I had no idea who he was, but, um, I'm, I'm keen to get to know Joe Chan. Um, it's a red dot <laughs> on your bench in about two weeks forever. Well, that's, that's why I've got, uh, I got Smith chips there. Um. As a as a nice nice bench reserve as well, so um, there's options. You don't have options. him, do you, Jesse? No, no. Well, I'm happy to are buy you actually worried time. about that? Are you worried about that factor? You just you don't know if he's guaranteed his spot. Um, one, there's no second row forward I want to be able to change at the moment. Um, Lukey, Lane, Fermor, Smithies, they're all pretty solid in there. The only other two, Piakura and Tupanua. If I was going to do it, it'd be Tupanua. Um, obviously, I can't this week. Um, I'm still tempted to obviously see what happens, but it's one of those ones where I'm happy to ride that one out for a couple and just see if it's going to be worth a um, a price change or a position. But yeah, the fact that you've no one's ever heard of him, he's come out of nowhere. Um, he's bottom dollar. You've still got Sean Bloor sitting there. You've got Kane Bradley, who everyone was keen on about five minutes before team list come out, um, quickly changed their tune. And then you've still got plays to come back. So yeah, I, I'm... I'm happy to let that one ride out for a little bit just to see what happens. But, yeah, might be a a lot of people scratching their heads come two weeks' time thinking, where the fuck's Joe Chan gone? He was our guy. But, you know, (laughs) leave that one out. I'm worried. Yeah. Yeah. It's not ideal, but for the price and the fact he's starting, let's just see what we can do, Joe Chan. I'm up for this ride. You know, I'll call it. He'll be the new Hopgood. Good on him. You said that last <laughs> week about um. Yeah, look, you know what? So I'm going to get someone right. I'm just going to keep saying it, and eventually I'll get one right, and I'll come back to this and I'll clip it and I'll go, guys. I told you all at the start of the year, so and so was going to be hop good. So no, Burbo's no one's, 
no one's saying there has to be one new hot good. There could be multiple new hot goods. You know, could hot just gods, be one yeah. of those. Could be one of those years. Started uh, with none. One no, last yeah. little point. Um, my boy Sua Falongo uh, wasn't named. He is carrying a little bit of an injury, I think. So he, he'll be back maybe next week. Uh, interestingly, Bellamy did. Uh, he was quoted saying he's not sure what his role will be, but he needs to get him involved when he is fit. So. He knows, obviously, it's fullback his best position. He won't be able to get that with Pappy there. So it does sound like there is a plan in place for him. Um, I just don't know what the hell that's going to be. No one can get into Craig Bell in his mind, but he's a wait and see. If you do have him in your team, unfortunately, just don't start with him. It's a, a headache. Just wait to see what happens with him. For Penrith, not too much surprises. Um, obviously, with Mitch Kenny um, suspended, Luke Summerton gets the number nine spot. So we can officially say Sonny Luke's season is over. <laughs> he's gone. just, what, is, how, what a turnaround of events. From going to one of the most popular Supercoach players the start of last year to being not even wanted in the starting side with Mitch Kenny out of here. To be fair, Luke Summerton, I have. I've heard a lot of raps about him. He's a quality, quality young player, but geez, what a fall from grace, boys. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't just realized that. Sonny Luke. Yeah, I don't think Sonny Luke was famous for any particular reason. I think he was more infamous. Just for being super coach. A pain in the ass. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it could only be one week, though. I think Kenny's back next week. So um, whether or not we see him on the bench or, you know, Tyron Peachy rotates with him and he just gets a short spell, it'll be good to see what he can do at least. But. Yeah. Well, he could he could be a nice if he does hang around on the bench. He could be like a nice uh, sideways move from Levi if that turns into an absolute disaster. Yep, which it yeah. absolutely could. Um, There's every possibility. High, yeah, high chance. <laughs> yeah. Very, very high chance there. I know Denny Levi. Um, unfortunately, Jesse, one of your guys you're really keen on hasn't made the side. Scotty Sorensen. Yeah. So, I think he's out. At the moment, I have to double check what the injury is and how long he's out for. But uh, Lukey Garner is there. Um, yeah, your, your boy's not mm. there. You're... Yeah, it's a shame. I saw Commiserations. that. Before. I think it's injury related. He walks back mm. into that team. Yeah. yeah. Has to. Has to. He might, he might um, hobble back in. <laughs> <laughs> Depends yeah. how Luke Garner goes. He's had his hot and cold games. We all, we all know that. He's, it's been a very hot and cold career. Uh, to date, that's that's about it. Um, I think uh, Lua's back to, to partner with Cleary. Uh, make of that what you will. But Liam Henry does get that bench spot. So it was between him and Maverick Geyer. He does get it. So you'll probably get a nice 25 to maximum 30-minute stint from him, I feel like. And yep. that's good enough for Jesse. So that's probably good enough for super coaches. Oh, there's not many other options, man. So I was hoping for McKaylee. I suppose I'll take what I can get at 238. We'll get yeah. there. We'll get yeah. there because that was a punch in the guts. Um, a little bit. But anyway, that's it. I think that's it for the Penrith Panthers. Shane, you got anything to touch on with Penrith? Um, I mean, just that Taruva is like alive yeah, after the World Club Challenge. <laughs> um, yep. Not that yes. I've got him, but um, yeah. How sexy is their back line though? If you don't have like a bit of a mix of one of those uh, – Panthers centers or wingers. I don't think you're doing it right. But um, yeah. I I don't have Liam Henry. I just yeah. I've already got uh, yeah. Joe Chan, so I'm I'm full up of guys I know zero about. So um, <laughs> we'll see how he goes. We'll see how he goes. Reach reach your quota. <laughs> yeah, I'm at, I'm at um, capacity. I'm at capacity. On the Taruva news, I was a little bit annoyed because I actually really wanted to see Taylor May get a few early weeks at wing and just quickly boost that price up would have been absolutely beautiful, but good work. He, he's back. We don't want to wish injury upon anyone. So I'm sure Taylor may would do a great job in the centers. Saturday yeah. game, Parramatta Eels versus the Canterbury Bulldogs. Um, Parramatta, pretty stock standard. A lot of people are annoyed at Brad Arthur lying to the general public. How dare a coach not give away his tactics um, to, to the general public and oppositions. But he's gone the two hooker system. Lusick will start, probably get a good forty-five to fifty minutes out of him, and then um, basically Brennan Hands will, will get the rest. Uh, apart from that, Harper is the center while Sevo is out. With that means Bailey Simonson moves to the wing. Um, 
as a para fan, that has me shitting bricks. The fact that Morgan Harper is in our starting side. Um, I've laughed about that signing. The, <laughs> yeah. I have laughed about that signing the whole, signing. whole off season, and we're going to be stuck with him. But anyway, that is our recruitment team. We go and buy, pay big on our forwards and stuff, and we have no depth whatsoever this year in our backs. Awesome. Um, anyway, that's about it for Paramount. I don't even really want to talk about him because. There's nothing really exciting at all from a super coach point of view, is there, boys? Um, oh, I, I wouldn't someone. go that far. I've got I a go that far. Yeah, they've got some. You know, they got some quality man for super coach options. Yeah, but they're all Rambo, they're, they're already all Zini. priced high. Yeah, Brown Moses. Obviously, there's no cash options anymore because of last second hands. But Sean, Sean Lane is going to make relevant money. Player. Yeah, Sean Lane's going to oh, make yeah, coin. Lane. You know what? Yeah. Even Hopgood's going to make coin. I reckon Hopgood goes up. He probably pushes 900k at one point. Um, so forget the bottom dollar cashies. You've got premium dollar cashies too. So obviously, you know, you got to pay up for him. But there's players there, man, that will continue to rise. So obviously, um, obviously uh, Joey Lusick's going to make uh, at least three to 400k. Oh, at least. Yeah, playing Stick 180 with him. minutes. Lock. You can lock that in. That's a Shane guarantee, and I'll never appear on the podcast again. After that, <laughs> one and done. A spe- yeah, perfect. A special shout out to he's a very awkward price to start with, but I see a very big season ahead for Will Panasini. He is someone that I keep toying with the idea of having him in my team. I just can't make it work at the moment. I'm hoping a, a cashy that I've got a cheapy can make some quick cash for me early on so I can move over to him. He's definitely one. I have my eye on. He's clearly our strike center in, in this side and probably our strike in the back line. And I think he'll just be carving up deluxe this year. Yeah. Mm. I've I've yeah. got him in a, a draft side and I am chomping at the bit to watch him carve up the doggies uh, on Saturday. So, he, yeah, he, he's a he's definitely like a, like a big pod option. Um, I feel like there's there's other guys who are a bit more elite that you want to spend on if you're kind of spending a bit of money and then there's kind of your cheapy range. But, you know, if if that's your pod and, um, you know, the Eels do have a good, like, starting draw, then, yeah, maybe it's an option. Yeah, their run goes for so long as well and he is a good price. Um, yeah, I will say option, this but... about their run, though, like, because everyone's talking about their run and they've got the Eagles twice in uh, before they go on by in round nine. And people were probably thinking, like, the Eagles, eh, that's that's a fairly easy game. But I think we saw on uh, Sunday afternoon that, uh, you know, the Eagles aren't going to be pushovers this year. Uh, they got a lot of points in them. So mm. maybe maybe the draw isn't as easy. I think Manly it's, and Paris it's easy, never an easy game. Comparative, yeah, it's easy compared to some of the other team's starts. That's sort of where it comes into. Um, none of them are that easy, easy in general. But... Um, it could be worse, you know. Well, they got so they start off with the dogs. Um, they got Penrith, Manly, so those two are pretty tricky. And then it's the Tigers, Raiders, uh, Cowboys, Dolphins, Manly again. Mm. So, yeah, it's a good chance they win half of them pretty comfortably. I'd Raiders. say, but Raiders are in Canberra, which we absolutely suck balls at as well. <laughs> we we hate going down there. <laughs> I think so, everyone hates going down don't, there. Don't. We're only human. Don't, don't don't sell yourself short, Joey. Your team sucks balls everywhere they go. True. I'll, I'll, I'll cop that one. Uh-huh. Uh, the Bulldogs is a much more interesting super coach team, I feel like. A um, lot of talking points coming out of this lineup, which they, they signed 14 utilities. So this lineup was always going to be interesting. And you know what? They've they've delivered uh, in a way. Um, they've also you look at when you look back on paper, you just think, oh, this side's missing a bit still to, to be real competition um, heavyweights. But your boy, Jesse, I know you've been huge on him. So we're going straight to you for this one before we talk about anyone else. Jacob Karaz, no, not on the wing, he's in the center. So are you still high up on Karaz? Yep. Never in doubt, mate. Karaz is a beast. Uh, he's going to be fine in the centers. I have no worries about that. He scored very well in the centers last year compared to his wing scores as well. They're pretty similar. Might get a few more runs down the wing, but, mate, he's going to get his hands on the ball a bit more in a bit more, you know, effort. The guy, 
bust tackles like they're nothing and he offloads. So I will take that in the centers. Yeah. It um it's got me tempted. I'll put it that way. I've got him in a draft team, so I've got my fix somewhere. Um Shane snaked him out of another one, so I didn't get him in both, but uh yeah, at least I'll take it in the one that I care about too too much. But yeah, maybe in my classic I might buy him in there, but Again, it's at the expense of two of us a check. So I don't know if I can do it or not yet, uh, considering, you know, it's the dogs. But never in doubt. I knew he'd be in that team. Wasn't a worry at all. What about the Phoenix niggle? Trial. Are you worried about his about the niggle he's carrying? Nah. He had a Jackie niggle all Kras. last season, mate. It's Trey Kraz. <laughs> Drop some dirt in it. He'll be right. <laughs> Magic sponge yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. Shane. I don't have Drew Hutchinson in my team. I don't think you do either, but Jesse does. I don't want to touch him with a 10 foot mm. pole. Um, I don't even think he should be the, the number seven, but anyway. Um, yeah. What's what's our argument against here for, for Drew Hutchinson? Oh, how long does this podcast go for? <laughs> as long as, as, long as you want it to go for. <laughs> we okay. don't have time limits here that everyone knows about now. Yeah, no. I've, I've watched a few of your podcasts. Um... <laughs> I've, 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 I've thrown him on the TV behind and I've been doing some exercise and I looked down at my Apple Watch and I was like, holy shit, I've been doing cardio for two hours and this podcast is still going. <laughs> um, but but uh, look, I, I had dabbled with Hacho in my side at points um, and then I saw the light and um, I took him out. Um, I just don't think he has really much upside there. Um I think it really depends on the makeup of your center wing. So, like, I've got Holmes, RTS, May. So they're, like, three strikes, strike players. Like, May is obviously a, a pretty cheap for his price, but he's a gun. Um, and then I've got Ben Trebojevic, um, and I've got Jamin Salmon. So, like, that's five guys that I could play in my, you know, four spots from week to week, I feel, um, hopefully, depending on how Salmon goes. So... Yeah, you know, I've got Bostock for a cheapie. I've got Tool Picky for a real dirt cheapie. I just, there's no spot for Hacho there and just no real need for him in my kind of like the dynamics I have at my center wing. So I can see like where there's a world where you could, you could pick him. But I think with the fact that Salmon came along as well, like, yeah, that I'd be picking Salmon at any day of the week. And I, and I wouldn't want to have two kind of cheap doggies in my center wing. No, no, you wouldn't. Um, glad it's not too cheap hookers either. Um, Jesse, we're going to have a live debate here. You can go on your reasons for. Um, I just think at 350 for a starting halfback, it's just too much of an opportunity to not have him. Obviously, I haven't, you know, I, I've spent up and I, I've got Ponga, I've got Cleary, um, I've got Hines, Dylan Brown. Like, obviously, Shane's not got Ponga, he's got Tedesco. So there's, um, you know, straight off the bat, there's 290k in the bank. Like that's that's where you can get your Val Holmes and stuff. And I just don't have that kind of money in my Senate wing. So like I do have Salmon there. I could play. I can play Top Picky. I could play Bostock. I'm not going to be super confident in the base. The base out of Hutcho is pretty good. I can at least take that. And if you can just bag some attacking stats out of it, um, if you can get me a 50, obviously he's going to he's going to go up in coin. He's only 350 to start with. So it's not a um, it's not a season long play by any means, but um, if the base is you there, do it. And he, keep him. You know what? If there's no reason to swap him, <laughs> why would you? What a move guy. him up, move him up to a halfback. Nico Hines yeah, out, Hutcho in. Yeah, um, go, I'll all go in. Nico Hines out. I'll put Drew Hutcho there, and then I'll get Marzu and Val Holmes. And bring in Munster as well. So you're going to be a halves pairing as Munster I'll probably, and Hutchinson. I'll probably have to, to get that extra 60 <laughs> So, you know what? It's not over until round one kicks off. So, we'll, you know, we'll do some crazy shit before now and then. Um, but that's the reason why. I feel like it's just, it's not exciting. It's just a bit of safety, a bit of something to play with a dual position. Um, there's every chance that I put Salmon in the starting lineup and Hutch throw out if I have to. So it's all, you know. Jesse, were you, were you saying that Boss Stock was in the mix to potentially have to be a starter for you if you didn't have Hutchinson? Um, no, not that's what I've just got at the moment. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'd, if I wasn't going to have Hutcho there, I'd, I'd take him out and then I'd just shuffle things around and get someone else. But there's no one really above him that I like until I get to Zach Lamont and he's 460. 
So I need to find at least 110k. Um, so that's, that's what I mean. I don't exactly know where I'll, I'd find that right now. So I'll just I wait think... until I get some price rises and hope I'm not priced away too far. I'll say this much. I think Bostock will score more than Hutchinson scores this week. So, more well, than likely. I, I, I'm with Shane. I don't like it anymore. I, I did like it originally. The more I think about it, it's the Bulldogs. It's their attack. It looks so clunky still. It just doesn't seem right. There's players out of position and it's not working. And I think his main job will be to free up Matt Burton to do pretty much everything when it comes to attack. And that still won't happen because Matt Burton should be in the centers. But that's a whole new podcast that we won't will not get into tonight. Um, everyone's super coach favorite, Reed Marnie, is still there starting and doesn't like anyone on the bench will eat into his hooker minutes. Um, I don't think Kurt Mann will be coming on playing hooker, but might be wrong there. He might do that. He might come on and play that. So Poasa Farmer Silly uh, gets the starting spot. That came from left field. If anyone got the starting spot, I thought it was going to be Sam Hughes, and I was absolutely loving that. Uh, straight away, just because he's starting, he becomes an option because he's so cheap and it just works for my team. That's the reason I'm on it. I'm not very high up on the move. I, if I could have gone elsewhere, I would have because I don't think he's one of those quality points per minute player. Um, he can tend to be pretty lazy. Um, but for the price, I, I can't bag anyone for making it. So I'd only be bagging myself. So <laughs> he's in my team for now and I'm not thrilled on it. But here we are, boys. Yeah. No, nah, man, it's, you know, it's it's a low risk play, I guess. I'm just going to plug him in there. You've got both of them too, though. That's the thing. That's the only thing that might deter me a little bit. As I probably yeah. wouldn't have both of them. I, I just run with Sam Hughes because you expect him to get a start at some point. Um, and at least you've seen a bit of good stuff out of him. I don't think Farmacilli was that crash hot during the trials. So, yeah. I, I, I was tossing up personally. him him or Viliami Fafida from the Dragons. But my worry with him, and we'll get to it when we get to the Dragons, is... Luciano Leilua is still to come back into that side. And I think he ends up making way on the bench for, for either Leilua or Eisenhut to come back onto the bench. So I'm just a little bit worried for Fafida and, and he actually how many times he will play before. I think Leilua's only been suspended for one or maybe two weeks or something. or I'm not sure what's going on there, but I don't think he's out for too yeah. long. So I'm a little bit worried for week. Fafida's. Yeah, it was initially two weeks, I believe, but they've reduced it to one, so he should be back pretty soon. Um, I don't think Fafid is going to be there for long either. At this point, you know, besides Sam Hughes, there's not really many other options. The only other player, honestly, that I'm half tempted to go to in the front rows is Mariotta. But even still, I don't know what happens when Horsberg gets back either. So yeah. it's um, there's just nothing happening right now. Yeah, yeah look, Bronson I've, Sherry... I've got... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I got Sam Hughes locked in, but I can't get behind uh, Farmer Silly. Um, uh, yeah, both of them. I just see Farmer Silly low minutes. Yep. And uh, he, you you won't be looping anytime soon because Farmer Silly is going to be sitting on your bench in five rounds' time, scoring like 15 points. Yep. Love That's, it. You heard, That's the problem. You, heard, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> bold predictions. Uh, Bronson Sherry didn't make the bold. side, so obviously Karaz and Crichton in the centres. So uh, get rid of it, get rid of him if he's still in your team. Is my advice. The shock here: Jamin Salmon gets the thirteen. Um, he is the starting lock with Josh Curran uh, on the bench. So that is huge. Um, I was loving Josh Curran and having him there as that sort of eighty-minute type forward. Um, for the Bulldogs, with especially with the way their packs look, and it just doesn't look good on paper at all, I, I, in my opinion. So, the fact Simmons won that position now, I mean, he was good in the trials, but we haven't seen him play lock consistently at NRL level yet. So, it's a big call, but I can understand why uh, you, you're getting in on him, boys. Yeah. Why not? It, yeah. No, all over him. I think, like, you, you say it's a surprise, but I think it's been bubbling in the background since like trials have been going on but it is funny like you know every man and his dog was all over josh curran early on and um you know you thought all right he's 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 been moving over from the, the warriors and you know he didn't get his starting spot so he's come to the doggies one of the weaker sides in the competition so you know surely he's gonna he's gonna have his starting spot so 
not only does he not have a he doesn't have a 13 spot, he doesn't have an edge spot, he's on the bench. So yeah. Um it went wrong. It'll be interesting to see the way they rotate the minutes, you know, because Salmon is really like a, a utility. You got man utility. So like is Marnie gonna lose some of his minutes to one of those boys? Are they gonna go through the nine? Yeah, it's uh it'll be interesting to see. Uh, how they do it, and I'll put my hand up and say I've never heard of Curtis Moran in my entire life. So, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he's a gun. He's the next Hopgood. <laughs> yeah, he could. He could there very he well be the next Hopgood. Uh, one final discussion with the Bulldogs team. This I want to have with you guys is Billy Army Kickout, um, who was very popular early on. I feel like he is called dramatically. There is not much talk at all about Kickout. I don't know if one of you can quickly bring up his ownership percentage mm. at the moment as it stands, but I would go out and say it's probably below 10% now. It, it would have to be something because there's just no one talking about him, and I think rightly so. I never was in favor of the kick-out play. I just don't think they can get him involved uh, like the Penrith Panthers were able to do. Uh, he's just so lazy. He's just a player that you – I don't see him doing much at all points-wise. Like, it would not surprise me if he just gets along 30s and 40s and – the occasional try, which gets him to like a 55 or something, 60 round. But kick out for me is not a play. 9% for him. 9%. So, yeah. oh, I was right. 9%. I was right. Still on him. Yeah, 9% still of him, people nine percent of people have lost their freaking mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing, Go on. Too, nothing too exciting there with kick out, man. Yeah. yeah. Not no, a fan, no. not really. But not, there's too many other options mm-hmm. too. At the same price, he'll have he'll have one like big score out of maybe four or five games, you know. And he's he's yeah. had a real bad run with injuries, so um, put together. He's some not game a worker. Time. When you... Yeah, he's there's not. so he's many not. more of those mid tier players who are going to work, and you know you're going to get some much better scores. It's just a much better player to go to, to some of those guys. Uh, the next game, uh, Titans versus the Dragons. Um, I was excited for this because of, of a J- uh, Jaden Campbell um, play, but that has since changed with the injury. Keanu Keeney gets the fullback spot. Um, no one really talking about him, I think, because he just, I think he's only in for, for a couple of weeks until JC is fit. So it's, a, it's hard to get him in. I don't think he's bottom dollar either. He's actually priced a little bit higher than that. I think he's in there. He's a fullback only. Flow. That's the problem. He's, he's a good yeah, price. And he's, he's, um, fullback, so. he's only in the fullback. So it's just too too you risky to put him it. in there. You can't do it. Um, apart from that, uh, Philip Sami got the wing spot over Jojo for Fita. Uh, Tana Boyd got the seven, uh, which I personally would have got another way, but that's that's me. Good to see Bo- both uh, Firma back boys. Um, and he think he's in. I think we've all got him, don't we? We've all got yep. both Firma. Yeah. So that, that's it. And no for feeder early on has me even more in on both firm and mm. left edge. It's got every up option, man. He's gonna be he's gonna be a gun. I've got him in both draft teams, all in on both firm all. So fingers crossed. See some good no, things. You're not you're not hedging your bets at all. Just <laughs> no, all in on no. firmal. Just all in. Um, yeah, that's fair. I was nearly all in on uh Palacia. This afternoon, but Jesse talked me Let's out of chat it. Him. I saved my money well. and went elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the fact like I got a few jewels and I wanted one more. So um it was him or uh Viliami for feeder, so who is substantially cheaper, which ended up yeah. kind of winning it for me. And I discussed before that I want to get Spencer Lenny out of my side. Um so I needed at least a hundred K. But um yeah, I don't know, like I was saying to Jesse as well, if it's the wrong call and Palacia comes out and, and does quite well there at the 13, then I can, you know, change it up and get him in. That's kind of like the the joy of um, having the three-week wait before price rises. You get to fix your mistakes. So, um, yeah, what, what turned you off him, Joel? I was very keen, but it meant I had to change my hooker to Reese Robson, um, to, and that sort of made it work. And I just thought about it. And he would have been my third uh, prop forward. And I just thought, if it means I can go up to uh, Harry Grant, as, as I said, I have no interest running reserves as props and stuff at the moment. And 
Um, ideally, I'm not trying to name some uh, players in those positions that have got a decent run. I know with Harry Green, he's got an early-ish um, buy, which I will have to contend with, but I'm hoping I can just stack the rest of my team to cover that when it, when it does happen. But I'm worried about his minutes uh, once Fafita's back uh, and how that makeup of that team ends up uh, happening. It sounds crazy to say that because – Fafita's obviously the edge, not a not a middle. And then, then Cleese Haas, I think, comes into it because he's got some big wraps on him at the moment, Cleese Haas. And I think he goes to the bench um, and gets involved with some of the middle uh, minutes because I think Furmore and Fafita will be big minute um, back rollers for the Titans. It'll be very rare to see them go off, even though Des Hasler in the past has been an absolute, I don't know, the right word to describe Tess has of it to super coaches has not been friendly when it comes to forwards. Uh, so that's always in the back of my mind as well, but I don't know. Yeah. I think it was more so because it meant I couldn't go. Harry Grant was my biggest thing. I'd be interested to hear what Jesse's thoughts are, why he was against him, because I feel like he's a decent play. Um, obviously the jaw is nice, man, but I think what is around like the, the higher the mid to high three hundreds. So um, you know, you, you've got at that price, you have half an intention to play the guy at some point. You know what I mean? They do have that early buy, so read into that as much as you want. It's there's nothing too exciting going on with that, but I just think, like, obviously, you've got Fafita to come back relatively soon. Um, Tino's in the 10, you've got Liu who's going to come in and play those minutes, you've got Clark who can Joloff at some point. I would have expected Joloff to probably start with Tino there, but um. Chris Randall can play through there. you got Sam Verrills on the bench. So, like, how long does that stick around for? If anything, I feel like Palisade is going to get the least amount of minutes out of the, all of them over, the you know, at least a few stretch uh, weeks here and there. But I just, yeah, it's nothing too exciting. I just don't, I don't like to play for his price. I just think he's going to do what he's priced at and might just and be with a Aaron, with Aaron Clark on the bench with Sam Verrills, Aaron Clark's not coming on to play hooker. He's coming on to play middle forward, which has been a lot of talk in the off season as well. So he'll come on and play that 13 role. I've got no doubt about it. So which cuts Palisades minutes straight away. So yep. yeah, I was with you, Shane. I, I really did like the play. I felt like it was a, a nice little juicy option, but the more I think about it, <laughs> the more it does not appeal. Yeah. He's, he's the one that got away, you know. I think with your justification as well, you were talking about it for feeder to Cotter, uh, not for feeder, um, Harry Grant to Cotter. I think that makes a lot of sense to uh, yeah. to not go him and, and get Harry Grant. I did want to say, though, before we move on to the Dragons, you know, justice for my boy Sammy Verrills. I was absolutely left reeling when I heard rumours that Verrills was not starting. One of my draft sides was in disarray and there was – F all hookers on the waivers. <laughs> so um, it was not a good time. But, uh, yeah, interesting interesting call from uh, Des. He likes to change it up. So, mm. yeah. Well, yeah, he's not starting. He's on the bench. He's 14. So Chris Randall is starting hooker. Mm. So it's it's interesting. I think Sam Verrills is a gun. I've always had a high rap on Sam Verrills. I actually wish Parramatta signed him a couple of years ago when we, when we had – Read Marnell even, but but we didn't. That's an, an, a completely another story. Don't get me sidetracked. I could go on for hours about that. Um, Tino, do we think he's going to be playing some big minutes? He's obviously very, very highly priced, and I've seen that that has not deterred a lot of players out there who are still on the Tino bandwagon. We, we um, anticipate some big, big minutes. We know Des likes to play around with that forward pack, but I feel like while David Fafita's not there, he needs to be playing some, some good-sized minutes. Yeah, I reckon, you know, 65 to 70 yeah. out of Tino. That's, that's what he does. I, I don't see. Unless, you know, he plans on coming in and killing him like Peyton killed Tamalolo, which I'd very be, I'd be very surprised to see. Um, yeah. yeah, you can't take Tino out. Not like that. And especially when you don't have Fafita there as well on the park to, to at least hold the fort down. So I just don't think the others can keep up like he can. Yeah, they're paying him too much money now. So, um, and yeah, he's the he's the captain, right? Like yeah. he's been captain for a while. So yeah. absolutely, uh, like you said, Fafita not not in. He's the big leader. Um, so yeah, um, I'll be scared to watch him. 
Yeah, Shout out to you. Todd Payton. I think you've had mentions in our podcast the last three or so weeks. Thanks, we Daddy. absolutely love you here. <laughs> Jesse's a massive fan. Maybe your super coach team should be named something to do with Todd Payton. Maybe that could be your new thing. So the Pod Paytons. Have that. <laughs> Done. <laughs> there you go. Um, the Dragons team. I don't even know where to start with these dragons team. They just <laughs> looks like they the dragons. Yeah, it just they don't get me excited. Every time I go to just look at them or try and discuss them, it's just like do I have You don't to? get excited by <laughs> Flanagan and Ben Hunt? Well, you're a Flanagan man. You've obviously gone away from him. Yeah. You were very I high on him for a long time. Yeah, because there was fuck all other five eight options until Ethan Strange locked the spot in, so Especially for the cheap dollar, anyway. Um, I had Lockie Galvin in there for ages too. Yes, so. I had him. I had a mm. taste of Lockie Galvin. So mm. interesting what happens. That'll be a next week discussion when we actually finally see the West Tigers team list. So yeah, it's been what, true. three weeks for him. Um, I guess the only real talking point: Zach Lomax is still on that wing, um, not fullback, which I just think they're crazy for not doing so. Yeah. Unfortunately, until he gets named at fullback, I won't be even contemplating getting him in to my side. As soon as he goes to fullback, I am absolutely loving it. I think he would be a huge play, but until that happens and we see Sloan out of this side, Zach Lomax isn't a super coach option for me. Tom Eisenhuth gets that starting spot, but don't get excited, guys, because Layla was only out for a week, so he'll be straight back into that spot. Um, and Eisenhuth, for mine, was just one of those workers. He was not going to get you huge points um, for a super coach point of view, but he did have that center wing duel, which I think a lot of people made sort of interest in, but no, thank you. Anyone else want to talk about anyone to do with the dragons or can we move on? Um, probably Jack DeBellin, I see being decent option because when you look at that interchange, it's fucking horrific. Um, Mul, Mul, Mulheisen, Malizen. I'm sure it's Mulheisen or something. Mm. Um, He'll obviously spell for Little, who's, you know, apparently not injured. Um, but, yeah, for Tyler Mariner, Viliami Fafita, Michael Molo, fucking hell. What happens? I, I have I have nothing to add. No. It's it's dire straits there. They don't look like a great Quick side. One. But, you know what, they played quite well in their trials. So, yeah, there's unity amongst the I... boys. At least <laughs> honor among they won, they, they won their trial game. That they're off to get the grand final tickets. Um, to be fair, they did look good again, but it was against the West Tigers. So, well, that's I don't thing. know what to make yeah. out of that that game. That was just the most. That was the biggest mind fuck game I've ever watched yeah. in my life because you went away with it thinking the Dragons are looking good this year. And you just <laughs> you're like, oh, hang on, the West Wait Tigers, the, who we thought the week before looked good, was dog shit. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, just quickly on Jacob Little, because I know a lot of people are starting to talk, or not maybe not a lot of people, but people are starting to talk about him, especially if you can get guaranteed minutes in a, a long stint. Because I think Jesse, there's a stat there that once he gets over 60 minutes or something, he's averaging almost a point a minute or something like that. So he looks yeah. like a, a decent option, but yeah, yeah his, um, like his, his career grand. stats. From even from the Tigers, just going back, pretty much just career overall, like anything over 65 minutes, you're pretty much going to, well, his average is about 60, 62 ish. So, you know, he has got the potential there for it. But again, he needs the, he needs the minutes there because those plus 65 games were obviously like 80 minute games. Um, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. He could be doing the same thing as Cheese. You know what I mean? It could be very similar kind of output, but probably worse <laughs> because the attack's just, you know, either not going to be there or, it's the dragons stuff to worry about in general. So, yeah, I don't think I don't hate it. I still don't hate it. I think he's going to have a good year in general. But um, yeah, ideally you don't want to see uh, Connor Mahalahilis and whatever his. I, I'd, I'd love to know. I'm going to run keep, it through. Keep going at it. We're going to video. Video. Yeah, just nail this. I've, I've never heard it name. I've never heard it said. I've only ever there'll, seen it. Really. Be, I just look at it and I'm like, there'll be a team name, like a team video out there with them pronouncing all their names. So. We'll we'll get off the podcast and we'll watch it and we'll be like, oh, that's it, and it'll be like nothing like. I'm gonna this. take one more step and say it's Malizen, and I'm probably wrong again. It's 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 Malizen. It's Malizen. It could be. Is it? Yeah. I'm going Mal Malhazen. Well, it Mal looks like it should be. Yeah, it's the the H and the L are backwards. Then that's the problem. 
That's what's throwing it's, me. I'm just I'm just saying right. Heisenberg, but um Yeah, sorry, Connor. Sorry for this. It's probably the longest <laughs> anyone's spoken about you in a pod. Um fingers crossed no, he's you can take it. the spot off, Jacob. Forget little, mate. It's all, I just it's all wanted happening. to say There's a new pod for the year. There's the new Cashy. I just want to say that I I was a huge little hater uh, in the chat with Jesse uh, maybe a week ago. I think Jesse was like looking at starting little, and I was just not nah, not buying it. So I think uh, yeah, some of the stats where he does play good minutes, he can score well. But yeah, I think like end of last year, I, I showed Jesse some stats where I was like, oh, I'm not yeah. I'm not vibing it. I'm not vibing it. So. Yeah. Um, like yeah, um, but yeah, with uh, with Malizan there, he's he's definitely not an option. I think the last big thing with the Dragons is, from a super coach point of view, it's the Dragons. They need to earn my trust, so I'll just be watching and waiting. If I if it, it comes egg on my face the first few weeks, there's a few players there that just smashes the points. No worries, I'll take it and I'll go. You know what? Well done. Yeah, you proved me wrong, and then I'll get on a couple, but. I just can't do it yet. It is the St. George Lloyd Dragons, and I'm just not going to do it. And this last game, the Sun. With the two cheapest Bulldogs props on your bench, side by side. Yeah, but hang on. Sam Hughes is like a, a must. Uh, Sam Hughes should be 100% owned. I'll go out and say that right now. He should buy. Wow. By the time that kickoff is, he should be 100% owned. Um, And you know what? <laughs> Farmer Silly for being 204k or 234k, whatever he is. Oh, at least he's starting. I don't see anyone else around him. Like he's starting for that price. That's the reason why a lot of us have gone on Joe yeah. Chan. So I don't That's mind right. it. Yeah, fair point. All right. Who we got finally? Yeah, Fins the Dolphins the versus fin, Fins up versus the Cowboys. Um, the Dolphins. Oh, fucks me. I was so big on the hammer, and I've just I haven't gone with him in the end. I was riding him all off season, guys. I apologize. I tried to convince everyone to get on him, and how good of a year he will have. The halves scared the shit out of me, um, and then I've realized that Katoa's actually been dropped. Cody Nikarima is starting at five eight, which is yep. big news. That might actually help the hammer again and steer this dolphin side around a bit better to to really get their attack going because the back line is still good. The other big eye-opener was Jake Averillo. He's named in the 19 jersey, not in the centres, with Tessie New getting that spot. Um, I don't know what the hell has happened there. I was so excited with the Jake Averillo signing. I thought he would be huge under Wayne Bennett. I don't know if there's an injury or niggle going on there, if something's happened in the off-season, but... I almost had him as a guarantee, a guaranteed starter for the Dolphins. That's shocking. Mm. Yeah, it is a bit. Um, he I wasn't really a, a super coach player. He had, you know, there was a lot of people that were interested in him at some point as well. Um, but yeah, obviously didn't get the name. So I guess he just got to bail off him because he wasn't super cheap either. But um, yeah, I just don't know how long he's out of the side for. Like, what was the point of going there? Why, why get him? If you're gonna stick with Tessie New, so I think it just kind of shows that like the team as a whole has bolstered their stocks a bit from that year one where they kind of struggled to get a few like you know they didn't never got their big name um, stuff like that. I mean, you'd say they still haven't got their big name, but um, they've they've definitely got some quality players. Like you know, Aitken was in the mix. Um, he's been a great you know great uh, servant Herbie. for any club he's been at. Yeah, Herbie. Herbie's Herbie is the big one. Herbie's a big name. Yeah. I'd say he's the big fish, but um, yeah, I don't know. Dolphin. He's fish. also extremely like, attractive. <laughs> it's not much of a fish. <laughs> don't call him a fish. He's extreme. He can be top dog. He can be a bloody. Oh yeah, man. A lion. There's no one better looking than Herbie. I think everyone knows that. What a chunk of man meat that guy is. <laughs> uh, is... But yeah, man. He's he's nestling quite happily in a draft side of mine, so I'm I'm stoked on that side. But yeah, uh, I expect huge things from Herbie this year. I think he's going to be good. Um, does it look like he's playing inside Bostock? I was about to say that. That's yes, just, I looked at that as well. Yeah. So there's that free up for so, again. Yeah, that's that was one thing that I sort of wanted to touch on with the back line. There was everyone was worried that Azarko wasn't gonna wasn't gonna get much there, and I kind of thought it would have unbalanced the side a little bit having both their superstars together. 
I guess, spreading the love out a bit. You know, whether that takes away from Azarco because now they've got the option to go left or right pretty comfortably. Um, I think it just bolsters all four of them, to be fair. I think everyone's got a bit of a valid shout. Maybe Tessie New's not much of a, a super coach option, um, but Bostock, you know, should be in a fair few teams. And if you want to pay up, yeah, Azarco's big, big money, but um, I feel like it benefits him not having Herbie next to him in general, but they did have really nice link-up play during the trials. I think um, regardless, Azarco is going to get amongst the points. So, yeah. And I do like um, Cody Nikarima at 5'8". I think that's that bit of experience too. Um, it's probably a good thing that Katoa's, you know, going to bide his time a little bit, considering he did get thrown into the deep end last year. Um, and you saw it towards the end that he was rotating anyway. So it's a good player to, to work off. I think Nikarima's a bit of a utility regardless. You can kind of plug him anywhere and he'll do a bit of a job. But, yeah. No, it's a pretty solid team lineup, I think, man. I reckon the Finns got a good shout. I think uh, I think the player that we should really talk about is uh, Max Plath at number 15. So he's kind of come out of nowhere. And uh, word on the street is that uh, he's going to rotate through hooker. So, um, so get off Marshall King. Mm, so any Marshall King owners out there who are banking on 80 minutes might be a bit. Yeah. You should probably get, you know, still get some good minutes out of Marshall King anyway. Um, you know, traditionally he's not always been an 80 minute hooker anyway, but um, yeah, it's it's kind of not ideal for the big money considering, you know, you're not far away from, um, well, you're not far off Cook in general. And we saw what he did recently, but it's obviously Harry Grant who's the, the top dog. Um, how many minutes do you reckon Plath gets in general? Ah, I mean, you have to think, you know, 20. yeah. 10 to 15. Yeah, it's enough to enough to halt Marshall King a little bit. Yeah, I know like Marshall King, like a lot of people were kind of, you know, expecting a boost in average um, over last year. Um, so, yeah, like all of a sudden there's a, you know, a bench a bench hooker. That's, um, that's going to make that a bit interesting for him. Um, not yep. to say he, he won't be a good option. He might be a good option at some point. But, yeah, I'd be... I'd be I'd be looking at how the minutes go um, yeah. instead of starting with him. Fair. Yeah. Uh, no. Race stone at lock. Yes. That's Talk to me. Bad. Talk to you. He, um, he's dual position. I think he'll be he'll be quickly become a lot higher owned than he currently is. I think there'll be a lot of people. Because the, the thing I thought was um, Kenny Kenny problem. Bromwich, I thought would have been the starting lock, and he's on the bench, so. He's a worker, and he's mm. got dual. He's in that hooker as well. Um, he's 421.6. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, a yeah. A bit much. He's a bit much. That's the problem. If he was 100K or so less, if he was down, you know, next to the last six and the hands, and you could just make that clean swap and not have to worry about too much, I feel like you'd never play him as your main, um, your main hooker. It's just a bit too risky yeah. considering... And the other position, 2RF, like how many other 2RFs have we got at the moment around that price that are probably a better option? So I feel like I don't see his ownership spiking drastically. Um, You know, if if he was priced better, you know, you'd sort of, I'd look at it for sure. But, you know, he might be a good draft pickup for some because he might still, Mm. he's definitely going to still be on your free agents. I don't think anyone's picked him up yet. So, um, yeah, not too bad for that hooker duel your drafts, but I think that's where his appeal ends. Shane, can we get your thoughts on Thomas Flegler? Me and Jesse have had our thoughts over the few mm. weeks, so get a fresh feel with the Flegler effect. Um, he's so... I think he's the biggest seesawing player this year in Supercoach. I just feel like there's so many arguments of people going, yeah, no, nah, he's he's a must get into him, and then there's so many that's going, no, nah, I don't see it. I'll, I'll be honest. He's not. He's not someone that I've considered to put in my side at any point during preseason. Um, yeah, like he's one of those guys that you know he's coming over from uh, the Broncos. Uh, so you know he's he's another one of the the bigger name signings uh, that they've uh, got. And you know people are expecting more, but he's he's priced at four seventy five. Um, 
it's a real awkward spot, you know. He's not he's not like one of the low four hundred k cheapies. Um, I think you might be willing to pay like a four seventy five for a, a midi um, in two RF, but it's probably it's probably a bit much at FRF. Um, I'd prefer to be going all in on on a gun or going a bit cheaper. But um, I mean, there's thirty percent on him. I wish him the best of luck. It could go either way. Um, what do I know? I've got Spencer Lenny in my FRF stinking <laughs> it up. So, but uh, he's a he's a good player. Mike dropped just just on that one. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, I Mike, Mike dropped on myself. But uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like he's. I've got a bit more interest in him, on him now with the news of Gilbert obviously unfortunately doing his ACL. I think that means he does get a bit more minutes and definitely becomes this main guy in the forward pack, which I don't, I won't start with him. I'll say that now, but I definitely feel like I'm interested in to see what he does before the, the first price rise happens. And I might go to him, but I, I think that play there with no Gilbert actually helps him super coach wise. Yeah. Pretty good chance it does. Um, but then again, you got to think like before Gilbert was injured, everyone's expecting him to get 50 odd minutes. Um, now that Gilbert's injured, I reckon he gets 50 odd minutes. So I don't know what the difference will be. Oh, 55. <laughs> what does he do with the five? You know, it just depends. Like, you know, you got Josh Kerr, Kenny Bromwich, Mark Nichols. Um, it's not an inspiring bunch of players. Um, but you'd think, yeah, Bromwich. Stone, the, the second rowers are going to be set in. Lemuel is not too bad, I think, for an option. I wish he had center still. Probably look at him. But, yeah, I don't know. Like this, I just want to see it for a couple of weeks, I think. And you get that round three buy, which really hurts um, for the for the price rise, considering, obviously, those who don't have Terrell May are going to look to want to get him. Um, if you've got Flegler, you've got to wait a week before you can get your cash if he has any, and then you've got to change. So he'll have that buy right where you want it so it's a bit of a you know it's a bit of a speed bump but yeah i still reckon he does his regular 50 odd shift maybe a bit more but nothing nothing groundbreaking he's not going to get 80 obviously he's not gilbert i want to throw you on, i'm going to throw you under the bus here because you have loved this guy so much over the last few weeks can you just run through the cowboys lineup for us and just the, the big talking points coming out for todd payton's side okay <laughs> Um, so he's got drink water fullback. Yep, perfect gun. Kyle Felt gets them uh gets a spot. I think he beat out um who was it? Vellame. Semi Vellame. Yeah, Semi Vellame. So that's pretty big. Um I have to see what happens to that because I don't see Kyle Felt staying there too much longer. Um Zach Labart gets a center spot as well. Absolute gun. So I reckon he's gonna do Come on down. this season two. Yeah, big one. You've got him as well. So very nice. Um Everything else looks as normal as Tamalolo at prop. Elam Lukey starts. That's a big one. Yeah, Elam Lukey starts, which is very nice. Um, hang on, stop. Hang been... on. You, how how quickly have you gone past your man? JT starting. JT yeah, starting. You've got to be all over that. You've got to be all over that. Prop. Yeah. Where did you he's think he was going to play? Minutes, isn't he? Where else is he going to 80 minutes, go? isn't he? Guaranteed. Oh, yeah, maybe in his prime. <laughs> I just did. Where else was he going to start? He was always going to be a prop. That was sort of much the thing that you were looking at, but he wasn't going to get taken out by any of the other guys on the bench. Um, Ooh, would have been that. nice to see him at 13, but oh, maybe Jake Granville. That's the oh, one. Yeah, that's he'll, he'll, he'll come and play. Prop. Out. He'll come <laughs> out. He'll play anywhere. Um, yeah, but as far as, you know, super coach relevant talking points, I think, um, yeah, that's Helam Lukey's addition is a big one. It's pretty good. Um, on the bench, obviously, no McKaylee. So there's your cashy gone. Um, Jake Granville. Just Fuck a, you, Todd a, Payton. Just Fuck an everywhere. You. Yeah, there's another one Todd Payton fucks with. No McKaylee. Now I've got to think about another bottom dollar. Um, Finifuaki as well in the 17. I do like that. I think Finifuaki is going to probably... Um, I feel like if anyone, he's going to share minutes against Lukey. Nanai is obviously an 80-minute player. Um the the hopes and dreams is that Lukey becomes an 80-minute second rower as well because his points per minute are ridiculous when he starts playing big minutes. But I still feel like, for the time being anyway, um, 
we'll see him 65, give or take 60 minutes. Still not too bad. Well, Luke, um, Luke yeah. his track record of getting through regular NRL season footy isn't great so far. So yeah. I've got no doubt you know, Finiaki is going to be a huge player this year. I have got my eyes set on him as soon as Lukey unfortunately goes down for a six to eight week period. Yeah. Say it if, isn't if, so. Yeah. Well, I think we've it's all Luke. got him, don't we? Yeah, it's Lukey season. I reckon I've been like waiting for him to explode I didn't have Lukey. for multiple seasons. No? Yeah, I, oh, I'm that's... pretty keen to see it happen. You're going to be watching from the sidelines. You're right about Fine Fuiaki, though, like um, in a bit of a minute share because like everything like he's shown so far, whenever he's got an opportunity, he's a bit of a fucking madman. So yeah, um, he's a beast. it's, um, yeah, it's like why they were able to like lose Luciano without really batting an eye is that they had an eye on Fine Fuiaki there. Um, but uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see. I mean, I'm still back in Lukey big time. Um, yep. I think Nanai, the pressure is on him. You know, he had that big breakout year, um, mm. got a big con- got a big contract, and um, he hasn't quite lived up to it yet. So, yeah, it was yeah. A very quiet year for Nanai last season. Just with tries too. Like obviously, he had that massive season two mm. years ago, and he was just fucking banging tries in every every game, left and right. But uh, they dried up pretty quick when he um, put pen to paper. So um, I'd, I'd like to see Finifawaki get a run too, because at the moment, 290K, you know, it's a really appealing price. Um, and, you know, depending on how many minutes he gets, I don't really see him going up or down too far off that. You know, if he gets his 20 minutes, half an hour, good chance he stays around that sort of price. But you just sort of, yeah, I hate to see something happen to Luki, but if it does, I'm all over Finifawaki getting in that spot. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. But everything else, um, everything else looks pretty, you know, pretty standard Cowboys right there. Can I just kind of say, boys, that I did not realize when I came on this podcast that I was going to have to like harbor such a deep hatred for Todd Payton to fit in <laughs> because it just sort of happens too. It hasn't come yeah. out of anything, you know, malicious. It's just every time we get going, going about the Cowboys, we're like, "Fucking Payton, what are you doing?" <laughs> and I just caught on. We talk about balls. How good looking Herbie uh, yeah. Farmworth is, and fucking Todd mm. Payton. Yeah. I, I didn't even, <laughs> not, I didn't even mention. Him, just like fuck him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even say anything about Herbie. You boys had already said it all, so I was like, "That's right, all right." Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the Cowboys, and I'm just like, Scotty Drinkwater. I wish I had room for you in my side. You are a fucking gun. Yeah, I've um, I've tossed up swapping Pappy out and just going hard. To get Scott Drinkwater, because I would be hard having Scott Drinkwater in there too. So that's another thing. But you'd, you'd be well hydrated. I would be. I'd be drinking yeah. that water. That's for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, he's um just mental, dude. He's so good. So yeah, if you've yeah if you got him in, fucking hell, that's another one. I'll be I'll be wishing wishing away. Did, oh. None of you guys had homes, yeah? Was it just me? Just you. Just you, which I, I absolutely hate not having him either, to be honest. I think he's the best CCW for the year, mm. and I hate not starting with him. Wow. Yeah. So, I, was, yeah. I was sold on him already, but now that I know he's he's your center wing of the year, Joel, I was like, I might captain him this week. <laughs> Honestly, like, Worthy shout. left field, but would not, like, if you're looking for, the, if you're a pod player for captain season, that's what you do, he would actually be the guy to be going for. Mm. I just, I just yeah. want to. Uh, is he up against out. Herbie? I think he's up against Herbie. That'd be a, that's a huge matchup. He might be distracted by those good looks. Oh, I'll yeah, no, that I wouldn't put that's, a, that's a good looking matchup. That's a great looking matchup. Ooh. I'll be watching on Sunday. I might have to put the blanket over me or something. Goodness <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, pitch, pitching a pitching a tent uh, in your yeah. uh, lounge room. Yeah, he'll be growing a few inches. Oh. That's for sure. Yeah, inch at a time. Definitely. That's it. Is that it for the Cowboys, boy? I that's it for the team done. list, man. Mm. That is yeah. done. We are, we are done and dusted. Touch. I don't even think. Yeah. Do we have time to run through like the top 5% owned or something like that? Um, no. Is there a way to even look at that? Yeah, I don't think did we you, need to. Did you know who the most owned player is? No. Surely it's Burbo. It's, uh, it was, it was yeah. um, strange, wasn't it? It's it's strange and Burbo. They're both on 61% owned. Oh, um, shit. I got them both. You've got uh, you've got RTS on forty two percent. Is he third? Uh, 
Yep. Shit. Um, yep. Get on board. Actually, don't. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's no good. Ta- I wouldn't worry about it. Tail and May, 40%. Um, and Salmon is 35%. Oh, hold on. This is just center wing. So there might That's be some center people. wing. Yeah. No, but, but, uh, <laughs> but Strange and Burbo. Yeah. Strange and Burbo are 61. Like, they're the two highest. Um, yeah, Cleary is 48%. Um, yeah, the next, like, is Burbo's Cleary's the highest. Cleary's still higher owned than Nico. Oh, he's way higher owned than Nico. 40, 48 to 29. Percent. Yeah, 48 to 29. Yeah. Um, Harry Grant's the most owned talker at 34%. Um, Hands is still 16%, so that's going to change. Mm. They are. Um, and and um, <laughs> bloody Levi will jump up. He'll be very good mm, to jump yeah, up. Yeah, he's probably already on the way up. Last time I checked, he was, what, four or five. What is he now? Levi. Especially after listening to this podcast, to everyone will be on him. He's, he's number six. He's already at 11%. Bloody hell. So. Yeah, he's he's mooning too. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, nice. your, captain, your captain Ponga is at 37%. So he's he's clear that the most... Ca- um, own fullback. Then you got yep. Tommy at twenty two, Pappy at twenty one. That all That's makes fair sense. point. Do you reckon people that have Ponga also have Turbo, or are they go on one or the other at that percentage? Well, yeah, no. I don't know. There's, there's like just a million ways you can go with fullbacks. It's crazy. There's so many yeah. options. Like I was just talking about Scott Drinkwater. He's only eight percent, and then I've got Teddy in my side, and he's at four percent. Like, yeah. Could you imagine, like, a few years ago thinking that Teddy would be 4% owned? Oh. Yeah, no, it's I crazy. I still think he's a decent, he's a good option as well. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I th- I think that, like, there are going to be weeks where I wish that I owned another, like, fullback, but it's just a matter of, like, have I made the money I saved on him work for me somewhere else? And, mm-hmm. like, I don't expect to own him the entire season, so... Yeah, I feel like with the amount of talent at fullback, you you're gonna chop and change. You're probably gonna have all of them at some point. Um, mm. Just gotta time their runs, really. But yeah, it's um, it's a good price. Even Pappenhausen too. I think just Pappenhausen at six fifty is like, it's just rude not to. Yeah. Especially considering you know he started last season at like nine hundred and eighty something, obviously injured. But the guy averages a hundred plus, hundred and ten. Like fuck, saw that price. Just that speed. Speedy yeah. showed for that try against the dogs has just got me over the line. As soon as he did that, I had him straight in my team. So yeah, pretty much. That was I like, wanted to wait yeah. and I wanted to watch the first few weeks, but I just thought, you know what? And I remember me and you just Jesse saying we're not gonna have any Melbourne Storm players <laughs> in our team for the first after till after their buy. And here I am now with two of their, their big guns in key positions. So it's yeah. funny how quickly this super coach game can change. And as I said, guys, the post will go up. Uh, over the next probably tomorrow, maybe Thursday morning, about our teams, how they're they're looking, and I've got no doubt they'll probably change significantly before kickoff as well. But to be fair, right now I'm actually pretty content with my team, so I don't know if I want to do too much more playing around, and maybe there's a late injury or things like that. But boys, I think that's that's what we can call it a shift. Um, that is done and dusted. Um, I'm ready to go have a shower, chill out and get to bed. I know that much for sure. Um, but thank you, Shane, for joining us. I know you're about to, to go away, but um, you know what? If you go on Wednesday, I reckon you can jump on Tuesday night. I, I reckon you can come on next week. We'll see I'm what not, happens. I'm, I'm, I won't be staying here, so it, uh, I would not have oh, my okay. current setup. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be, on my, uh, it'd be on my phone in my girlfriend's car cupboard or something, so. That's right. It's up. all good. We can just talk talk shit about him next week, Jesse, in the next Stop. three weeks. So we're good. <laughs> we're just hey, hey, I'm not Todd Payton. Leave me alone. <laughs> you might enter that book. Um, yeah. that's it, boys. Thank you once again. As I said, uh YouTube page, make sure you do like and subscribe. It goes a long way helping support us. The same with the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you listen to your spot uh, your podcast. I don't even know where either the channels are but apparently we're on them all which i found out actually this week about so uh there you go so if you i think it's like there's iheart and all that sort of stuff i don't got no idea but there you go yeah. um but that's it and social media pages as well make sure you get around just give us some love on that but enjoy guys there's a, a couple more days to go until we're really kicking things off and cannot wait to sit down and watch kp double turn it up early on with the captaincy give me the 400 point total and 
me and Jesse will be laughing straight to Please. the bank. Uh, so Happy days. thank you guys and enjoy your night.